Hi. Today we are talking about Cambodia, specifically how Cambodia was affected by the Cold War. Now, Cambodia is known for many things, such as the Angkor Wat, the largest religious campus in the world, and a lot of natural beauty. However, it is also the homeland of some much less nice things, such as the Khmer Rouge, death fields, and one of the worst mass slaughters of people in history. But, you may say to yourself, what caused such a thing to happen? Was the Cold War involved, and did the United States and the Soviet Union have anything to do with it? Well, little Jimmy, sit down in the chair and let me edumacate you. So, it's World War II, funny mustache man and the Nazis are doing some pretty terrible things, and the United States and the Soviet Union are working together in beautiful harmony. Then the Allies win. Yay! Except now the US and Soviet Union hate each other's way of life. Boo. Now the Cold War is happening, it's not a hot war, we won't use all these large bombs that can destroy the entire world many times over. Nope, nice and chill, says the US. So for the next few decades, instead of the US and USSR fighting each other directly, they became puppet masters for other wars going on around the world. The USSR wanted to spread communism and the US was determined to contain it. The United States and the Soviet Union fought over several places like Korea, the Soviets supporting the North and the US the South. Same with the most famous confrontation in Vietnam, which is where Cambodia's story takes place. Cambodia's leader at this time was a man named Sihanouk. He had been born an only child of a prince and princess of Cambodia, and in 1941 ascended to the throne. There he ruled through World War II and got his country's independence from France in 1953. While technically he and his country were neutral, he tended to like the American way of life better than communism. In the middle of the Vietnam War, the United States wanted to put troops along the Vietnam-Cambodia border to do some quote-unquote military operations. Shianuk said, sure, why not? However, the US proceeded to occupy the entire country and dropped a few million tons of bombs into Cambodia, which kind of upset the locals a bit, as you would be if soldiers invaded your neighborhood and then blew up your house. In 1973, the Cambodian people were getting restless and wanted to overthrow the government in favor of a new one ruled by the Khmer Rouge. But the US's army was still occupying the country, making it almost impossible to overthrow the current one. Luckily for them, the US had just lost the Vietnam War and American troops evacuated the country. Almost immediately, the Khmer Rouge came into power under the rule of a dude named Pol Pot who favored a more radical communist system over the capitalist system Sihanouk had used. What started out as a great plan to make people's lives better eventually turned into almost exactly the opposite. Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge tried to make an agricultural revolution through collectivism, but it caused widespread famine. They also refused any outside help from anybody but Communist China, insisting that they needed any help from capitalist scum, even when it came to basic needs such as medicine, which led to thousands of preventable deaths. They also abolished currency so that nobody was rich anymore, but that meant that everybody was equally dirt poor. As well as getting rid of money, they also decided to go without schooling and even hospitals. Another thing to know is that Pol Pot was extremely paranoid that someone would take over his rule. So like any dictator who was paranoid that someone would take over his rule, he killed his opponents. Now this might seem fair since he's just doing what's needed to hold on to power, but he not only killed his top ranking political adversaries, but also hundreds of thousands of random people he felt were against him. But wait, you're thinking, well that doesn't sound too bad, at least there wasn't a genocide of all the minorities. Well, Jimmy, you're wrong. There was, in fact, a genocide of all the minorities, and literally anybody who was in the model citizen. This genocide, finally named in history as the Cambodian Genocide, resulted in the death of over 2 million people, which at the time was a quarter of Cambodia's whole population. And fun fact here, it was funded by the Chinese Communist Party, so that's pretty cool. Eventually, the regime had to come to an end, and what better way to do that than with a violent takeover by the Vietnamese in 1979. Cambodia was under the control of the Vietnamese until a decade later in 1989 when the old government was reinstated and rebuilding started. Moral of the story, bread is pretty cool.